In constrained optimization, the general problem that we want to solve is we want to maximize f of x1 up to xn. So we've got n many inputs subject to and we're going to have two general types of constraints. So we're going to have g1 of x1 up to xn is less than or equal to b1 all the way up to gk of x1 up to xn is less than or equal to bk and h1 x1 up to xn. So this function is going to be equal to some c1. And hm, say, x1 up to xn is going to be equal to cm. So these here we'll call inequality constraints. And these will represent boundaries for the inputs that we would like to have. And here we're going to call these the equality constraints. This function is the objective function. And this is the function that we actually want to minimize. These guys are all the constraint functions. So taken together, these are the constraint functions. So g1 up to gk, h1 up to hm are constraint functions. And this is a very, very general paradigm. We can see this by noting that a lot of examples in economics can be formulated in exactly this, this paradigm. For example, we have utility maximization. In utility maximization, well, we want to maximize, of course, some utility function of some bundle of goods subject to the price of good one times the amount of good one plus all the prices up to price n times good n is equal to our income i. So this would be an equality constraint and this would be the income function, say, or the, uh, the uh, expenditure function. Uh, but not only that, of course, we also want to have and subject to x1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. I can't have negative numbers. In general, this kind of thing happens all the time, greater than or equal to 0, so on and so forth. Uh, another thing that shows up a lot is profit maximization. Here we want to maximize some profit function pi of x1 up to xn. And that's going to be some p, which is the price that I'm selling it for, times f. This is the inverse demand, or the d demand for that bundle. i equals 1 to n of wi xi. And this is the cost, of course, where each unit 
of good xi cost wi to make. And we want to maximize this subject to, well, of course we want p, we want our profit to be greater than or equal to zero. That is almost certainly true. We have to just include that in order for things to even make sense. So we've got wi xi greater than or equal to zero. Uh, but we also have constraints on the amount of goods that we can actually buy. We can't, we cannot order 50 trillion barrels of oil tomorrow. It's just not going to happen. So we have in general, we'll have a constraint such as g xi is less than or equal to some bi. Uh, and we also have that the x1s, all these bundles can't be negative, right? And in general, we'll have xi is greater than or equal to zero. Um, but of course, this is this is ter in terms of xi being greater than or equal to zero, whereas our our things up here are less than or equal to zero. But we can just bring bring one over to the other side and get a negative.